my greetings to you and welcome to the next level where we learn and align ourselves to the will of God. Today, Sheikhs and I are discussing our favorite topic. We are talking about our spouses and the love we have for them. We hope this discussion will help you to realize the relevance of marriage and provide you with important tips on how to select a life partner. Good evening, Baba Masawa. How are you today? A very good evening to you, Pastor. And how are you doing? I am blessed indeed. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to the topic of discussion today. I'm very excited. So, Baba Masawa, can you tell the body of Christ how you met your wife? The very first time uh, when I met her, it was in 2012. 20, 20, uh, she was invited uh, in church in Centurion. Uh, <laughs> okay, the first time, uh, so uh, okay, <laughs> it was someone. Uh, I liked, uh, I, li I liked her uh, uh, when I saw her. <laughs> she was <laughs> uh, beautiful even today. She is still uh, an amazing uh, woman. So when you eventually got to talk to her, what did you say and what did she say? What was the first interaction? Uh, okay, the first interaction uh, with her, it was... I just went straight into the point uh, like I started to invite her uh, uh, for a, a date. And she agreed? Yes, yes, and she agreed uh, to go out on mm -hmm. a date uh, with me. When did you know that you are now in a committed relationship, you are in love? Since we were still uh, in Vasit uh, back then, uh, 2012, uh, <laughs> uh, we did not uh, start uh, loving each other mm -hmm. uh, back then in 2012. But uh, it all started in 2018 uh, mm -hmm. when we started. Uh, go out uh, all these six years <laughs> I've been chasing after <laughs> wanting to make uh, uh, the love of my life, my wife <laughs> so all these six years 2012 to 2018 you were chasing after or you were just admiring her from afar <laughs> I was chasing after her and yeah Eventually, in 2018, <laughs> I was victorious. <laughs> so now 2018 comes, and finally, you 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 get into the relationship. And how did she explain the six years? What did she say? They, uh, they will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> One of the reasons uh, <laughs> was that uh, back then in 20, 20, 2012, <laughs> I looked uh, like a guy who was too serious and <laughs> she was scared of that and uh, it intimidated her. Uh, uh, oh, in two series, and also another reason was that uh, <clears throat> I was not uh, open enough uh, to uh, uh, to show or tell uh, uh, how much uh, I love it and what is it uh, that I wanted. So uh, not that she she was ignoring you for the six years; she was intimidated by you, and also you were. You were not coming out clear in terms of yeah. now this is where we should be going. This is the direction I feel the Lord is leading me to. No, that's interesting. But but I, I'm really grateful 
that in the Church of Jesus Christ, we don't teach young men these pickup lines because that, that makes the whole thing so, so, so shallow. And yet the love experience is such a beautiful experience. Your, your journey was a very, very beautiful one. We watched you, the two of you, grow in love and it was beautiful to watch. Thank you very much, Baba Sam, for, for that. Then my own story. I can still remember the day very vividly. It was an evening service, and yes, we were also at university. I remember we were sitting at the back of the auditorium with my friends. We were totally sold out for the Lord. We loved serving Jesus Christ. We used to refer to each other as Ngeku, which means servant of the Most High God. Then in the service, this lady stands up to address the congregation. It was during a testimony time. Suddenly the service came to life for me. I saw her. I mean, I did not just notice her. My encounter was so amplified, it was like we were the only two in the room. I have no clue what she said on that day, but I remember turning to one of my friends who was seated on my right hand side and told him, that is my wife. So, so he, his response was immediate and emphatic. He just said to me, slow down, but do not worry. We will be here to comfort you after she rejects you. Needless to say, I did not heed Nati's advice. Instead, I used my influence as one of the leaders to draw her into activities that I was responsible for. I needed to be in her presence. So I went out of my way, found every excuse to work with her. I continued with that until she started to question my behavior. She did not appreciate the ministry demands I was placing on her. It was becoming too much for her. Instead of addressing her concern, I took the opportunity to tell her what was really going on. I told her, but you can see, I've been treating you in a special way. You know that I love you. She did not acknowledge and neither did she respond to my declaration of love. Instead, our friendship grew deeper as she became more willing to get involved in ministry activities with me. It didn't seem to burden her anymore. She took control of our conversations as though she did not want to leave any space for me to raise the love matter again. As I continued to observe the limited space I was being given, the conversations took a different turn. She started telling me about her future family, the number of children she would have, and their names. Things got more serious as she told me her conditions for marriage. First, she told me, I had to give up being a cameraman. I used to generate income through photography. That made me very popular with the ladies in the church, and she did not like that. Key yeah. among the list of conditions was that I needed to grow up fast and start behaving like a man worthy of being her husband. Specifically, I had to focus on finishing my studies, get a job, and prepare for the family. I was told in no uncertain terms that I would not go into full-time ministry because she does not want her family to live on tithes. I said, yes, ma'am. I agreed to all her conditions because all I wanted was to marry her. From the day I met her, I could not visualize my life without her. I was filled with so much joy the day after her father and my pastor gave us their blessing to marry. I could not wait. <laughs> but do, do, do you realize, Bamasao, that we both met them in church? Yes, yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> uh, for me, uh, for me, uh, it was the uh, first time uh, <laughs> in church uh, a friend had invited uh, to church. Uh, so. 
So she, she comes to church for the first time and you notice her. I notice it. I've asked my wife this before. And she says, no, it was not her first time. I didn't see her all this time. She was coming into church until she stood up. So for her, it was not the first time. But for me, the first time I saw her was when she stood up. And also, and also, I mean, the first time I laid my eyes on her, oh, that things had to change. I just, I just, I, I mean, really, it all it took was for me to see her. So, it is important then where you meet your spouse. Eh? It's important. Yes, 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 it is very important. It's yeah. <laughs> funny how uh, for more than uh, 20 years uh, we have been living in the same place, uh, same country, small country, <laughs> but we go and meet in another country. In another country, in a church setting. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. How did you know that this is the one and you love her? Uh, okay. Uh, the more I spent time with her, uh, <laughs> uh, I started to uh, love her. <laughs> and every time uh, I was with her, uh, there was that inner joy for me. Uh, everything uh, that was happening, uh, I did not force anything, and the happiness uh, that came within me, uh, it was <laughs> too much. You and felt the every... butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> was close to me uh, would easily uh, witness uh, uh, that happiness, that inner joy. I will just melt, melt uh, when <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the type of person uh, that she was uh, uh, be believed uh, in the same things and the love that she had uh, for Jehovah, it was amazing. And when she, okay, I always make fun of this when I'm with her, I would say that time when she was uh, in the place team, hey. <laughs> <laughs> it was hectic. <laughs> yeah. My, my, my personal account now, so for, so for me, when I met my wife, I was not looking for a spouse. I was just busy serving the Lord. Like, like I said, uh, me and my friends were just on fire for God. We were preaching. Yeah. Yeah. We were everywhere. In fact, at university, we were known as the preachers. And then I see her, that feeling that I got on that day, butterflies everywhere. I mean, just the moment I saw her. I still get those butterflies even 24 years after marriage. Without, without having interacted with her, I saw her on that podium and I knew she was the one. It was a calm, deep assurance within me. You see, I was not looking. Marriage was not even on my mind. But from that evening service, that's all I could think about. I wanted to marry her. And because of that assurance that was deep within me, I told my friend, even before I spoke to him, I told him, that is my wife. You see, mm -hmm. Baba Masa, there is, there is this misconception in the body of Christ that God chooses spouses for us. No, mm -hmm. God does mm -hmm. not choose spouses for us. We make the choice. We make the choice. Yeah. All God does is he prepares them for us and then places them on our path. I mean, both your account and my account, all that God did 
was prepare them and then place them on our path. We were just in the right place at the right time and we saw them. He will just parade them. He, he just parades them in front of you. <laughs> in fact, and then it's up to you. <laughs> and then it's up to you yeah. what you want to do about that. And and if yeah, you do nothing yeah. about it, nothing will happen. But he, happen. he prepares them, parades them before you. The Bible says in Genesis 2, verse 22 to 23, Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from men, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. flesh. So she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Scripture is very clear on this matter. God yeah. fashioned Eve out of the rib of her prospective husband, Adam. He made her beautiful and gave her all the personality, the skills, the talents to be the perfect helpmate for Adam. He then brought Eve into Adam's presence, paraded her, but he did not choose her for him. It is Adam that woke up from his slumber and declared, she is now born of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She, he, was, he was literally saying, I choose her. She is perfect for me, for she was taken out of me. I am finally complete. This woman adds color to my life. I can see clearly now, and I know I was meant for her, and she was meant for me. Yeah. So if Adam did not make that choice, there wasn't going to be a marriage there. Yes, there was not going to be, never going to be anything. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what's also interesting uh, about uh, that point uh, that we have touched is that uh, she, he met Eve uh, in the presence uh, of the Lord. Amen. Because uh, in, uh, at the Garden of Eden, it's where uh, the fullness of God uh, was, and he met her there. So <laughs> it is something maybe that I saw uh, from where we both uh, met uh, our <laughs> soulmates, something that is also common. Amen. So, so the message is loud and clear to you, young men and young women. Meet your partner in the presence of God. Oh, you will never go wrong. Oh, you will never go wrong. But this is not to say for those that met their partners before they knew the Lord, that God is not able to bless their union. God is able to bless their union. And by their yeah. conduct, it will help bring the spouse to the Lord. But what we are saying for every young man and woman is that stay in the presence of the Lord. Be busy with the work of the Lord. And God will come parading the right person, the one that was taken out of you, the one that is meant for you. He will parade them in front of you. You, you don't have to be going around looking. He will just bring them. The moment you see them, you will know. This is the right one. So, so what are we saying then? What are we saying then, Babamasa? Are we saying people should not go and do research to find out how much access this person has to resources? What is the status of their family? What, are they influential families in the society? Are we saying now class does not matter? Are we saying now all these things don't matter? All that matters is that you are in the presence of God, busy with the things of God, and God brings the partner, parades them in front of you, and you wake up like Adam woke up and said, she is born of my bones. This is flesh of my flesh. She was taken from me, out of me. Is that what we're saying? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, you have to be in the presence of the Lord. And when the time is right, uh, the Lord will parade <laughs> your wife before you and all will be uh, the moment uh, the Lord does that you will know <laughs> definitely that this is the love 
of my life. Uh, you will then have to go <laughs> and take what's yours. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we are discouraging young people to go out looking and searching for their life partner or for the love of their lives. We are saying, focus on serving God. Focus on serving God. And through the years, I've met with many couples for premarital counseling. And I try to get this point across to them, that desire does not equal love. Desire may be shown by a young person who tells you they cannot live without you, that they are miserable, and that life seems colorless and empty when you are not around. That may be a form of love, but it is not the sort of love that will hold a marriage together through the years. While they may feel they need you today, it's possible that six months down the line, you no longer meet their need and they will find that they need someone else. So you see, true love is based on commitment. Everything mm. you do when you say you are in love is to fulfill, satisfy, and serve the one you love. Love does not enter a relationship with an expectation to just receive. It enters a relationship to give and give and give even more. So, so young people, you must be careful of people that claim to love you, but simply want to take from you. Picture a young couple who has been dating for a few weeks. Before long, the young man tells his girlfriend how much he loves her and how difficult it is to keep his hands of her, pressing her to engage in a physical or a sexual relationship. He explains that he loves her so much he can no longer restrain himself. The truth is, any young woman who hears that lie should realize that the young man does not love her too much. He loves her too little. Actually, he is not thinking about her. He is only thinking about himself, his needs. His insistence on a physical relationship only proves one thing. He loves himself much more than he loves her. A proof of that is second uh, Samuel, uh, the story of Amnon and Tamar. Uh, uh, Tamar, Tamar was a very, very beautiful uh, woman. And <laughs> Amnon had his own <laughs> desires for her. Uh, the moment after she had uh, raped her. Uh, the Bible says uh, he hated her more than he had loved her before. Yeah. And, <laughs> and after she, he he had satisfied uh, his uh, last food and selfish desires. Uh, that's when he started uh, to hate her so much. So uh, this thing of going for, uh, for example, uh, looks uh, in a woman, uh, as a man, uh, if you desire uh, something for a woman, uh, at the end of the day, once uh, that desire is satisfied, uh, there is nothing that will be left. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> it would mean that uh, that relationship. Yeah, because because lust is insatiable. So, mm. so all the young men want or the young women want, if they are entering the relationship just to satisfy their selfish desires. It's all they want is just to sleep with you. And after they sleep with you, unfortunately, lust cannot sustain that relationship. That's why Amnon then hated Tama even more. He hates yeah. her because it was never love. It was yeah. all about meeting his immediate needs. Yeah. The same goes for a partner that has the audacity to ask for financial support and burden one person or burden the, the, the person before they are even married. Everything that has to do with someone entering a relationship because they have a need that they want to meet. Because they, the young man may look at the lady and, and look at her lastfully, or he may look at the lady and think 
she has access to rich sources because he knows their family or her background. And then he wants to pursue her so that he can have access to that, so that he can meet his immediate needs. Those things do not sustain a relationship. So we are saying to young people, they must not fall for such selfishness, no matter how wonderful it is presented. Anyone that wants to enter a relationship because of an immediate need, that relationship is bound to fail because love is about giving and giving and giving even more. It is not about taking. A person that enters a relationship to take is a person who is selfish, who wants to take for themselves. And that selfishness will not be cured by marriage. Even after you are married, they will want to take more because lust is insatiable. People that are full of lust, when they are married, they still step out of their relationships and go and sleep with other women. Uh, that's a very uh, good statement, uh, Pastor, because uh, uh, by so doing, you are opening up to things uh, <laughs> that you will <laughs> come across uh, in future that uh, you won't be able uh, to deal with them uh, because uh, the moment you start uh, for example, uh, accepting uh, the finances, uh, that financial assist uh, from your girlfriend. Uh, you are living a life now like you are married, uh, yet you are, you are not. Mm. You are rushing into things and for everything uh, that we do, we have to bear that uh, there are consequences uh, that comes with it. Yeah, you are teaching yourself a bad habit. So, yeah. so now then, Babmasa, what makes a relationship successful? How do you advise these young people to choose a marriage partner? What should they do? How should they go about choosing a marriage partner? Uh, the first statement uh, uh, that I will uh, put to the table is from Proverbs chapter number 19, uh, verse 14, uh, which says, Charm may be false and prettiness may be in vain. Uh, the woman that fears Jehovah is the one that procures praise uh, for herself. Amen. Amen. Uh, A, a prudent wife is from the Lord, uh, so <laughs> a good wife uh, you will get uh, uh, because uh, the Lord would have provided, uh, would have paraded her uh, in front of you. Uh, what uh, I can encourage uh, every young person is that uh, be active in doing things of the Lord. Uh, do them more often. Uh, if you look at Matthew chapter number 6, uh, verse 29, uh, when the Lord was saying, the Lord, uh, the birds, uh, they, they do not worry about what uh, they will wear and or what they are, what shall they eat so uh, what is it uh, that they will they are going to drink they don't worry about that uh, but at the end of the day uh, the lord provides everything so what the young people have to do is that they have to seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and then all the other things will be added uh, into their lives Amen. Amen. Mm. So a life partner is a blessing from the Lord. The Lord. <laughs> he or she comes from the Lord. And God adds these things to your life as you continue to seek first the kingdom. And okay. seeking first the kingdom means getting busy with the things that glorify God, serving him, serving other people. That is, that is making sure 
you establish the kingdom of God in every sphere of influence you've been presented with. So it's all about getting busy with the things of the, the Lord. things of the Lord, yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Our time is up, but Masa, when this was a very wonderful topic. We definitely will continue with this topic mm -hmm. next, uh, next week. Young people, stay tuned. This will help you. And believe me, when you get the one that God made for you, you avoid and you protect yourself from so many headaches. So in closing, make sure your life partner or whoever you choose loves God more than they love you. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter number 22, verse 37, that love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And then the second commandment is, Love your neighbor as yourself. It is so important to observe the person you want to marry. Observe their love for God. Why? Because in time, the way they love and serve God will be reflected in the way they love and serve you. When a man or a woman is not committed to the Lord, chances are they will not be committed to you. With that, we bless you and we thank you for joining us and we want just to pray God's blessing upon your relationships that the Holy Spirit will continue to guide you even as you grow in the Lord and serve him and God will bless you. He will add the life partner that you need into your life, the blessing of a woman that you need, that is meant for you, the blessing of a man that you need, that is meant for you, not a man that ticks checkboxes or a man that ticks whatever list that you have, but a man that was made by God specifically for you because they are there. A woman that was made by God specifically for you because they are there. Remember, as Bab Masamo said, beauty is fleeting. A person that you marry will not always look the same. So when you fall for somebody and you decide you want to stay with them, Base that decision on principles that matter, not on what appears to be beautiful at that moment. And don't fall for last. We are saying to you, don't fall for last. People that are, are driven by immediate needs, they may want your money, access to what you have, or they may want your body because you are so beautiful. Don't fall for it. Those things do not last. So serve God. Commit yourself to seeking the kingdom of God first and God will give you a blessing. He will bless you with the life partner that you deserve. And believe me, if you do that, you will see the person that you will fall for or the person that God will parade in front of you will love God more than they love you. And if they commit themselves to the Lord more than they commit themselves to you, then you know that person is accountable to somebody. They don't just do things willy-nilly or any which way they feel. They do things according to the word of God. Because remember, life is not always about sweet chocolates and roses. Life sometimes is demanding and only principled people are able to make it. Just to echo uh, on the point uh, that you have just touched, uh, that says uh, they must love God uh, more than they love you uh, because uh, the moment uh, they love God they will be able to treat you because once you get into marriage uh, it's all about uh, loving the next person as God loved the church and if you do not understand that you will not be able to right uh, to love uh, the next person in the right way Amen Thank you Holy Spirit and that is how we come to the end of yet another life changing word from the heart of our Father we are ever so glad to hear of the power of God at work in your lives in particular his saving grace. 
we encourage you to send us your testimonies. Let us magnify the Lord together. You can reach us at this email address, testimonies at the brookcc.org. And now, let us turn our hearts towards heaven for the blessing. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God and King, who purifies us with the blood of Jesus and leads us by the Holy Spirit and has commanded us to speak the blessing upon your people. As you have commanded, so we do, Lord. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May God give you the dew of heaven in the morning and the fatness of the earth at noonday. May he make you, mold you, and establish you as a living testament to his glory, that all the people of the world may see and know that Jehovah, your God, is indeed a good God. Glory to Jesus. Have yourself a victorious week. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.